future. We want them to start now. This year's maize production has been estimated at 4 million metric tons, up from 3 metric tons of last year. During the media budget review meeting, the Minister of Finance set aside 10.4 billion kwanja to be used for the purchase of maize. Still on farming, over 400,000 people in three districts of the country are expected to benefit from an 8 billion kwacha climate change adaptation program aimed at breaking the hunger cycle triggered by climate change. The five-year project is expected to roll out next month in Balaka, Machinga and Zomba districts. Meanwhile, the program has received a boost with the World Food Program WFP donating four vehicles to the Minister of Agriculture to be used in implementation of activities. Madeleine Sopiri reports. Deputy Country Director for World Food Program Malawi Country Office Marco Cavacante said Malawi was one of the few countries in Africa which successfully accessed a grant amounting to 9.9 million US dollars from the Adaptation Fund. He added that the fund was for building the resilience of vulnerable communities and households to climate change through integrated risk management strategies and enhancement of their market opportunities. Climate change is a massive uh, risk for uh, the development of uh, the world and uh, its uh, impact is uh, felt throughout the world but mostly among uh, people that uh, survive through farming adapting to climate change is an imperative for these uh, smallholder farmers to thrive and succeed we are partnered with the minister of agriculture and we think that the three districts identified will benefit uh, strongly from this project and the minister of agriculture lobin law was speaking during the handover ceremony of the vehicles commended the world food program for complementing government efforts in breaking the hunger cycle in the country. Climate change has uh, negatively impacted a lot to Malawian farmers and uh, with the adaptation fund there are so many programs that are preparing these farmers to make sure that they adapt to the changes and at the end of the day their livelihoods change. Lowe added that WFP was implementing programs that promote resilience in farming communities to break the cycle of food insecurity. For Zodiac, this is Madali Tsopiri reporting. To politics, President Lazarus Chakwera, Friday afternoon, warned Tonsi Alliance members that he will not condone those tending other people's names to gain political mileage. He was speaking in Kasungu Central, belonging to fat Labour Minister Ken Kandodo en route to Nzuzu. The president preached honesty and truthfulness among the citizens for the country to make significant development. No Kubu reports. President Dr. Lazarus Chagwera fired MP for Kasungu Central, Mr. Ken Kandodo, from his cabinet recently after he was implicated in the massive plan of public funds for COVID-19 management. Kandodo, who is a grandnephew of the late Dr. Hissing Banda, who was the Minister of Labor. And on his way to the north, the president had a stopover in Kandodo's constituency where he made some confessions. Dr. Chagwera told the gathering that he had drawn lessons from the filing of the Labor Minister and that the two met behind closed doors. He says there are some public officers within the system who allegedly dent the image of others to gain political mileage. The president has warned his government who not to arrest such people. The head of state preached love, patriotism, honesty and truthfulness among the citizens for the country to develop. He however reaffirmed his commitment to stamp out corruption in the country. Kandodo, who spoke earlier, said he had no grudges with the head of state and he respects him as a father. He pledged support to the party and the government despite being booted out of cabinet. A recent audit report revealed that the Minister of Labor spent over 600,000 kwaja sponsoring an international trip for the former Labor Minister to accompany the President to South Africa borrowed from COVID-19 funds. For Zodiac, this is No Nkubi Kasungu. To issues of economy. The World Bank in the week 
say it will support government in the areas of renewable energy, ICT, infrastructure and productivity towards implementation of Malawi's 2063 developmental agenda. The bank's International Finance Corporation Regional Director for Eastern Africa, Jumoke Jagan Dok Dokumu, says this is crucial in mitigating COVID-19 economic effects and will help the country achieve long-term economic growth. Details with Adams Wundaninge. According to a statement from World Bank Group Board of Executive Directors, the new country partnership framework for Malawi seeks to support creation of more jobs, strengthening of human capital and foundations for economic growth. International Finance Corporation Regional Director for Eastern Africa, Jemuk Jagandokum, said the World Bank will support the government of Malawi towards implementation of the 2063 development agenda by focusing on areas of renewable energy, ICT infrastructure and agricultural productivity in the next five years. Mr. Dokum hinted that the bank's intervention is crucial in mitigating the country's economic impacts of COVID-19 pandemic and supporting long-term growth. On her part, World Bank Country Director for Malawi, Mala Warwick, explained that the program will assist to consolidate the bank's investment where there is impact, particularly opening new opportunities for commercial agriculture and women empowerment. Meanwhile, the World Bank has committed to provide $2.05 billion towards the delivery of key objectives of country partnership framework within its first phase. Reporting for ZBS, this is Adam Clement Undaning. The High Court in Lilongwe in the week ending ordered sheriffs to seize property of former President Peter Mtarika and former Secretary of the Government Lloyd Muhara worth 22 million kwacha for failing to settle court costs. The order stated that the two had only managed to pay 47 million kwacha of the fixed 69 million kwacha. The two were found in the wrong for forcing Chief Justice Andrew Nurenda and Justice of Appeal Edward Tweyer to go on leave pending retirement without following the law. We had details in a report by Andrew Viano. The court order, which has been issued by Justice Kenyatta Nirenda, dated May 4, 2021, through Longwe High Court Registry, shows that the two only managed to pay for the 7 million kwaja and now face sheriffs for the remaining 22 million kwaja. Former President Peter Mutariga and former Chief Secretary to the President Lloyd Mohara were on March 12, 2021, ordered to pay 69.5 million kwaja in legal fees to lawyers representing the Malay Law Society the Human Rights Defenders Coalition and Association of Magistrates in Malawi. The three apparents sought a judicial review on the decision by Mutariga through Muhara to send Chief Justice Andrew Nirenda and Justice of Appeal Edward Tuea on leave pending retirement ahead of the court-sanctioned fresh presidential election on June 23, 2020. Lawyer for HRDC Kumbo Soko says the order has since come into effect from Tuesday. For the seven million kwaja that was paid is in the process of, of being paid through what we call Ganeshi proceedings, you know, where we had to target third party banks where the respondents hold accounts so that they could uh, turn over the funds to our clients. So that process only yielded for the seven million kwaja and uh, that left a balance of around 22 million kwaja, which uh, uh, we were instructed to collect through this uh, process. On June 12, 2020, Muhara issued a public notice that Chief Justice Andrew Nirenda and Tuea should proceed on leave to clear their days pending retirement, a development that angered HRDC, the Association of Magistrates in Malawi, and lawyers who later held demonstrations protesting the decision as an infringement of the doctrine of separation of powers. You're watching This Week in the News on Zodiac. We still have more to come. Stay with us.
building a successful business is not an easy task. It takes a lot of focus, hard work, persistence, determination and sacrifices. With the passage of time, business growth is achieved to the amazement of the investor. After witnessing such growth, a strategic business person secures the business from risks that have the ability to ruin the investment. That is where the prime insurance company comes in with a business insurance policy that targets small and medium enterprises. If you own a fewer service station, restaurant, lodge, clinic, farm, photography studio, retail or wholesale shop, you have an important partner in us. Without waiting for fate to strike on your investment, reach out to us at our offices in all the major cities of the country and get your business covered at affordable rates. Prime Insurance Company. We care and share in times of need. <laughs> Kwanjezi la mainiti, ati enem kuyambida 200 kwa chaka Pena kuposi la pamenepo, muta ukaa mmoti mwama milionea muti enem tikolore promotion Chakati no ni kolola, chakati no ni kolola Kuma muka unjezi la mainit ni 100 kwa chaka Pena kuposi la hapo, muti zandia mabonas wa imbida phone ni SMS kapena data pompo pompo TNM, always with you We come back here at the top stories once again. Outmark to open its markets on Monday next week to start purchasing maize among other farm produce. Over 400,000 people in the country expected to benefit from an 8 billion kwacha climate change adaptation program with funding from World Bank to support government in areas of renewable energy, ICT, infrastructure and productivity. In sports, firm delighted at the postponement of the 2022 World Cup qualifiers until September. Moving on with the news. Two weeks into the start of this year's tobacco selling season, it was discovered that Malawi had realized 15 million US dollars, approximately 11 billion kwacha, from the 9 million kilograms of tobacco sold. Tobacco Commission Chief Executive Officer Dr. Joseph Chidanti Malunga says the sales have improved compared to the similar period last year when only 9 million US dollars had been realized from 6 million kilograms sold. Andrew Viano filed this report. Revenue from tobacco hit 15 million US dollars, which is approximately 11 billion kwacha at the end of week two of sales after trading about 9 million kilograms, according to figures from Tobacco Commission TC. During the same period last year, Malawi sold about 6 million kilograms of all types of tobacco, realizing 9 million US dollars, approximately 7 billion kwacha. TC Chief Executive Officer Dr. Joseph Chidanti Malunga says despite high rejection rate at the markets, tobacco sales are promising to be better this year. Out of the three markets that we have as of uh, two weeks, we have sold nearly 9 million kilograms of tobacco, realizing over 15 million US dollars at an average price of $1.68. cents. At the beginning of the market season, most farmers want to keep their best crop. We encourage them to do their best in as far as the grading is concerned. Economic expert Miriwa Tobias says while prices have improved this year, Malawi should find replacement for the green gold, which is losing economic grip. The start is good. Also take into account that usually the first tobacco is that from the bottom. And the, I think as the market season proceeds, then we have... Uh, the middle is, which is usually the best. This is a, a crop whose future is quite bleak, uh, but uh, we don't have to lose hope. In 2020, the country sold 113 million kilograms of all types of tobacco, raking in 174 million US dollars, approximately 135 billion kwacha. 120 million kilograms of tobacco are expected to be traded by the close of this year's market season. Earlier this week, Zodiac grabbed three of the topmost accolades at this year's Misa Malawi Awards presentation for exceptional practice of the journalism profession in the country. For the 14th time, judges found Zodiac Radio to be the best electronic media house and Zodiac Online News platform on the other hand. And Maria Chidanjankoma was posthumously named Lifetime Achiever this year. And its control of news and current affairs, Daniel Mawaba spoke on behalf of the rest of the Zodiac team. 
First of all, let me dedicate these uh, awards to our followers, uh, followers in Malawi and those beyond our borders. Uh, these are their awards. You know, we would not have been here without uh, their following, without their support. Uh, people, I like to say this most times, people that advertise with Zodiac, people that love Zodiac, love Zodiac because it has a following. And therefore, um, uh, this award is theirs. Um, secondly, my reaction is that of excitement, particularly the radio one is, is obvious. We, 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 we have done this, we've been there before, but the one you mentioned about um, uh, the best uh, online media house in the country, uh, there was some work there. People may not understand it, but there is a lot of work that goes behind the scenes. Uh, we have COVID-19 and a very difficult economic environment. There is so much work that goes in there. What this means to us as Zodiac is that uh, it is a sign we must work even more. They've given us a lot of work and added responsibility. We have to invest in sustaining our performance. We have to invest in sustaining our creativity. We have to invest in sustaining the morale in our, in our people that work for Zodiac. I can promise without uh, any shade of doubt uh, that uh, we will do better we will strive to do better uh, there are things and feedback that we get from our followers about things we need to improve like i said that is the work we should be focusing on but we can promise uh, we'll sustain the creativity we can promise we'll give them uh, unbiased news you know, most of these people are looking for news and we will we will remain what we are and let me mention this this is a sticky area that uh, uh, we would not like to discuss but people have been asking because we have uh, uh, the owner of Zodiac, or the managing director, is now a government minister, and therefore Zodiac is compromised. Uh, uh, they are making a mistake. Zodiac remains Zodiac. Uh, we remain professional. We remain independent. And uh, this is what I can promise people will see in the coming years. In the week ending, Civil Society Education Coalition, CSEC, wrote government expressing its dismay over what it called its lack of interest to resolve its prolonged impasse with the Teachers Union of Malawi. CSEC Executive Director Benedicto Kondowe felt the impasse has created uncertainty among teachers and, effect and effectively affecting their delivery in class. Chimwemwe Padata had this report. To date, Minister of Education has not resumed the talks with Teachers Union of Malawi to over the COVID-19 once-off payment impasse. This is despite a relief by the Industrial Relations Court, the matter be resolved outside the courts. Delays to resume negotiations have forced Civil Society Education Coalition, CISEC, to take action by writing government expressing its displeasure. CISEC's Executive Director, Benedicto Kondoe, fears the situation might cripple the country's education standards as teachers are growing frustrated over the recalling impasse. We are moved with these developments and we felt that uh, uh, we needed to write government to make sure that uh, they do the right thing uh, so that the best interest of the child in Malawi, who has been previously affected, uh, could be uh, uh, protected. Civil Servants Trade Union area told us through its chairperson, Joseph M. Dambo, a meeting is yet to take place with government's negotiating team over the impasse, but Minister of Education could not be immediately drawn to comment on when the talks will resume. For Zodiac, this is Chimwemwe Padata. Now we turn to sports. The soccer governing body, FAM, said the postponement of the World Cup qualifiers will allow the country to renovate its stadia to host the games in September. However, the association's competitions and communications director, Gomeziani Zakazaka, says despite the development giving an opportunity, it also poses a financial challenge for the Flames to fulfill assignments as they will play over five games within a short period. Brad Kanyama has filed a report. 
The postponement of Africa's World Cup qualifiers has drawn mixed reactions from different quarters, including the Football Association of Malawi and sports analysts. Farm says the development is a blessing in disguise, as Malawi was listed among countries to host its home games away from home due to poor conditions of its stadiums. Farm communications manager Gomizani Zagazaga says the FA will ensure the Flames play its home games in Lilongwe at Bingu National Stadium given that the qualifiers will now start in September 2021. However, Zagazaga says despite having an advantage, the development also poses a financial challenge as the Flames will be expected to play five games between September and December as well as fulfill AFCON games in January 2022 in Cameroon. From the administrative point of view, I would say it's a blessing in disguise for Malawi. Looking at the issue that we are dealing with, issue to do with the venues, Bingo National Stadium, which was our alternative, was not certified because of not being inspected so uh, basically uh, it was a blow and a challenge to us meanwhile sports analyst george kaldamasina has advised the fa to lobby for more funding towards the flames through malawi national council of sports to ensure that the flames fulfill all assignments it has to be appreciated that uh, the new financial year of government is starting and the parliament to be in session for the budget session it is uh, now apparent for firm to lobby with the malawi national council of sports to increase the funding for the national team. CAF postponed World Cup qualifiers, which were scheduled to start in June 2021, to between the months of September, October and November, with the final round set for March 2022. For Zodiac, this is Bright Kanyama. This is That's all we had time for in this week in the news. A reminder of some of the top stories before we leave you. Artmark to open its markets on Monday next week to start purchasing maize among other farm produce. Over 400,000 people in the country expected to benefit from an 8 billion quarter climate change adaptation program. World Bank to support government in areas of renewable energy, ICT, infrastructure and productivity. In sports, farm delighted and the postponement of the 2022 World Cup qualifiers until September. Visit ZodiacMalawi.com for more news. Thanks for watching. I am Philip Kedanda Costa. To be honest, my community is my playground for where I pick up my creativity. After all, it's our story. For the best of your original dramas, telenovelas and sports, get your GoCoder, GoTenna and a month of GoTV Max for as low as 19,999 kwacha. Download my GoTV app to easily manage your account on the go. GoTV. Love it. <laughs> Thank you.